If you want Colts talk all year long, you're in the right place. Fires upfield into the end zone. It is caught. Jelani Woods. Touchdown. He's going to fire upfield. It's broken up. Tip and intercepted by the Colts. This is the official Colts podcast, giving you an updated look at what's new with the horseshoes. Colts have it. Interception. Two seconds left. And the Colts are going to win. In the Indiana Union Construction Industry Radio Studio, let's get the podcast started. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to the Thursday edition of the official Colts podcast brought to you by WinBet. You got the Thursday crew. We're back for not one, but two podcasts a week during the regular season here on the Colts Audio Network, Colts.com, the Colts mobile app, and also Boys, welcome to YouTube. Casey <laughs> Vallier, wide receiver in the Ring of Honor, Bill Brooks. I'm Matt Taylor, the voice of the Indianapolis Colts. And Casey, we finally got Michael Scott to come down here from Scranton. <laughs> we called the YouTube people to come down and film this finally. There we go. It took long enough. We got know? on their schedule, right? <laughs> exactly. So welcome to uh, YouTube Part 2 this week. We're going to be with you twice a week, as we said, every week of the regular season. And we got a lot to talk about, fellas. we got Colts and Jaguars. you got to make sure you say the wars. Yeah, that's here in the Midwest. I said it, Jaguars. Jaguars. So wars. Yeah. <laughs> Jags. Right. You definitely get called out for the wire. But Jaguars. <laughs> The a uh, defending AFC South champs last year, they were nine and eight. But man, what a flurry to close out the season last year for them. They were seven and two down the stretch. Trevor Lawrence looked like a completely different quarterback in the last nine games of the season last year. So we'll talk about all of that. So a lot to get into today. Also, Josh Downs, the rookie out of North Carolina, he's going to play a big factor into this offense. He's going to join us in just a few minutes. He's scheduled to be on our podcast today. So we'll talk about him going into his rookie season and his excitement level playing in his first regular season game along with Anthony Richardson coming up on Sunday. But, fellas, I want to start this podcast off with a confidence meter. Okay. All right? So, like a thermometer level, yep. all right? We got a confidence meter. We're going to bust out a handful of situations, a handful, a handful of players going into the season, going into Sunday's game against the Jaguars. And your confidence meter, Bill, can read strongly confident. Okay. All right, that's an option. I like it. It can be, I feel good, like James Brown. <laughs> uh, I need to see more. Or a little concerned. Those okay. are your levels of the thermometer or the, the confidence meter. So breaking it out first and foremost, Casey, I'm going to start with you. Got to start with Anthony Richardson going into his first NFL game, week number one against the Jaguars, a defense that returns basically everybody yeah. from last yeah. year outside of Devon Hamilton, who's got a little bit of an injury. He's their nose tackle. But all those familiar names, uh, those movers and shakers, they're back on this Jaguars defense that was really good against the run last year, not so much against the pass, had some question marks in the secondary. But Anthony Richardson against the Jaguars defense – what is your confidence meter going into week number one? So I think I'm going James Brown. I feel good. All right. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not overly confident, but I don't have too many concerns just because I think it's all one of those things we're going to find out. It's still a learning process for everybody. Like Jacksonville, as far as game planning against Anthony Richardson, there's just not much tape out there. What you saw in preseason, it's hard to really judge what all you did see that you can game plan for. So I think there's just going to be a lot that we're going to find out on Sunday. So therefore, I do feel good because we've watched him in this offense play for you know a little over a month during you know OTAs and training camp. So we have a good idea of what it's going to look like, and there's you know a lot that we're going as I keep saying we're going to learn. But I, I actually like you know, kind of the vibe that I'm getting from this team heading into Sunday. I, I really like that the way it matches up between the Colts and Jags. I think there's some areas where the Jags might struggle as far as what they're bringing back, you know, what we saw they put mm -hmm. on tape last year. Mm -hmm. I think some of those areas the Colts can expose, and I think there's areas the Colts can, you know, maybe win a couple of those categories. So in the offensive standpoint, there's a lot of stuff I like about this Colts offense and kind of that unknown on what we're going to see on Sunday. Oh, yeah. I feel good. I agree with you, Case. I feel good about Anthony Richardson. And, you know, as you said, there is some unknown. Um, first of all, we don't know how he's going to do for a whole game. We haven't seen him play four quarters. Right. We haven't seen no that. Doubt. So we don't know exactly what's yeah, going to happen. Essentially three quarters is exactly. what we saw during the preseason. Exactly. So, so yeah. we don't know exactly what we're going to see. But I think what we all can say is we like his poise. We like his physical ability, what he can do out there in the football field. We saw him make some good plays. You know, saw him make some plays where he ran, scrambled. 
gets gets uh, some yards, puts him in field goal position to get a field goal. Um, I like what I saw out, out of him running some of the offense, being poised out there, being under under control, and having the command of the offense. And throwing, of course, his arm strength is unbelievable. We all sure, know that. So sure. I feel good about where we are. Yes, there are going to be some points where we you know what we're going to say, oh. That was a rookie quarterback. You know, he's going to make some mistakes out there. We all know that. But there's going to be some times where, you know what? Ooh, his physical talent took over here. Yeah. And he's going to get some defensive guys. And the defensive guys are going to get him some time on some plays. They're going to confuse him a little bit. He's a rookie. He hasn't seen everything. So, I think overall, though, I feel good about where we're at with Anthony Richardson. You know, for Sunday, I mean, all of this is going to come in time. You know, we're, we're going to have 17 games, 18 weeks to talk about Anthony Richardson and the progress that he's making. And we'll have plenty of time, certainly in the offseason coming up, to debate whether or not uh, his rookie season was a success, how much did he, how, you know, how far did he come, how much did he progress, all of that stuff. But for this game on Sunday, okay, I'm talking just exclusively for Sunday. All right, I'd love to get your take on this as a former player and certainly as a former wide receiver. I don't care. Uh, what the completion percentage is. I don't care how many passes he completes. What I want to see on on Sunday from Anthony Richardson is just stay out of bad plays. Yeah. Stay out of yeah. disastrous plays, right? Don't turn the ball inside your own, uh, you know, in your own territory. Sure. Don't turn it over inside the red zone. You know, stay out of those bad decisions like we saw in week one yeah. in the preseason against right. Buffalo where – the, the, the timing of the play is all out of whack, and he hitches on his delivery. His mechanics get all out of, out of uh, sorts when, in terms of timing. I just want to see Anthony Richardson keep the Colts in a position to win the football game and not do anything to prevent the Colts from getting points and putting them behind the eight ball in terms of the entire offense with the decision-making process right out of the gate from a Jacksonville team that – I'm sure there's a ton that he's going to see on on film. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he talked about on Tuesday spending eight hours on the off day. <laughs> yeah. You know, getting up to speed with everything and everybody in terms of the film. But inevitably, there's going to be things that he is going to see for the first time. And in those situations, Bill, I just don't want to see a panicked rookie quarterback. Exactly. You you want to see a quarterback that you know, if say for instance you're in the red zone, there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. Throw it out of bounds. Throw it away. Right. Throw it. In the back of the end points zone. are good. Yeah, po yeah. Three <laughs> points, points are good. Fine. Pills yeah. are good. Points are, yeah, we're all there. I think. <laughs> yeah, I think, every, I think we, we we heard that from Shane Steichen early on. Like, hey, points are good in this league. Last I checked, that's a good thing. So I'm right there with that's you. That's a yeah. good thing. And then don't try to force a ball where you see maybe the guy is covered or something. Like don't try to force the ball in there. We know you have a strong arm. Right. You know what? Throw it where either the receiver's going to catch it or no one's going to catch it at all. And then you know what? Punting's not bad. It's not a bad thing to punt the ball and let our defense go out there, and hopefully they can create turnovers because we want to see our defense create turnovers. Hopefully, you know, we don't know what the situation with Shaq, but Shaq is back. Maybe we get some more turnovers, so we're not, no sure, about, we're not sure about that. But don't make a bad situation worse. And that's what I think mm. you're trying to say, Matt, oh, as far absolutely. as in regards to that. And yeah. then that way you keep yourself in a ball game you're not turning the ball over. You give yourself a chance to win. No doubt about that. All right, Bill Brooks right there, Casey Valier, Matt Taylor here. Confidence meter number two going into Sunday's game. Bill, we'll start with you. The, the stable of running backs within this offense early on in the season without Jonathan Taylor, can these running backs complement Anthony Richardson? Can they keep the Colts on schedule in terms of down and distance uh, in the running game, what is your confidence meter on the running backs and the running game early on in the season? Well, I think we all know what Jonathan Taylor can do out there in the football field. I think we know his talents. But without Jonathan Taylor and these three guys that I think that could possibly play, you know, with uh, Zach Moss, Deion Jackson, and Evan Hull, I feel confident, I feel good about the running back situation because not just what these guys can do, they bring something different to the table. Each of them brings something a little bit different. Zach Moss, kind of more of a power running back. Evan Hull catches the ball at the backfield very well. Deion Jackson, kind of a combination of both of those guys. Mm -hmm. So I like what uh, they can do, and I believe Shane would use, was going to use these guys to put them in situations to win. Not just those three guys in the running game, but remember, Anthony Richardson could run as well. You know, And I think that will add to this running game uh, to help them. And not just the, those three guys running, not Anthony Richardson, but the, uh, the read option. Mm -hmm. Running that play. Saw it in Philly where Anthony ran the read option down near the goal line. Ran the play. The end had to stay out wide there because, you know what, I don't want Anthony Richardson to get outside of yeah, me. Yeah, that's so, my job. So that's right. my job. Mm -hmm. So it opens up the lane up there in the middle 
running back goes and scores. So I think the running game is going to be fine with that, with the read option out there, and with the running backs that we have uh, on the roster. See, I, I'm going to go a step further. I feel confident oh, in, in wow. what this group is. I think. Okay. I think I Zach, feel very strongly. Very, very strongly. You're like Owen Wilson from Meet the Parents, you know? Like, how's your portfolio, Greg? Uh, strong, strong to quite strong. Quite strong. <laughs> um, no, but I, I feel very confident. Honestly, I, I think what you alluded to with all of them kind of bringing something different mm -hmm. and you throw in kind of the, the fourth running back, if you will, in that group with Anthony Richardson, I think that, that core right there, I think it's, it's, it's really a, a good group when you look at the overhaul, like the overall of what that dynamic running back room is going to look like, mm -hmm. it, I'm not saying that Jonathan Taylor doesn't bring you an element that you you can just say, oh, we don't need it because Jonathan Taylor, as you mentioned, yeah, that's silly. You know what you have and what he can do to a team. But right, right. I kind of look at what you saw with Shane Steichen in Philly. Yeah. Yes, Miles Sanders had a really good year, over 1,200 yards rushing, great year. But if you look at the collection. As a whole, they were a great running back group. And it was and you, by committee. And it was by, by committee. committee. Yes, exactly. Yes. And you throw in Jalen Hurts into that wrinkle like you would if you throw it here with Anthony mm -hmm. Richardson. So when I look at That's that it. whole group, yeah. I really do feel pretty confident about what this team's going to do from a running game. And I think all of it, the offensive line, I've been very bullish on. And, and I really think we're going to see them take a big step from what we saw last year into this year. And I think all of that is going to really help this running game. No, that's exactly right. I mean, do you think the, the running game without Jonathan Taylor will be as good? No. No. Of, of course not. Right, I mean, right. Jonathan Taylor is in a small bucket of 100%. dynamic running backs in the NFL, right? That's the most obvious thing anybody on this podcast is going to say for the rest of, you know. <laughs> Forever. For the next the 18 of, weeks. The rest of the season, but, yeah. I mean, I, I agree with both of you. I think it's going to be fine. Yeah. I, I think the running game should be fine because, I mean, is Miles Sanders one of the best running backs in the NFL? No. No. But he still ran for 1,200 yards yeah, exactly. because of the scheme. They had a great offensive line, certainly in Philadelphia. You can't take anything away from them in, in terms of that. But the Colts' offensive line is ready to bounce back. The scheme should help tremendously. Anthony Richardson should help tremendously. With that in mind, Bill, I mean, what do you think is in store for Richardson in the ground game on Sunday. How many carries? Wow. How effective do you think he's going to be right out of the gate? I think he could be effective, but not even if he doesn't carry the ball. Just his – The threat of him the being able to carry the, the ball. Yeah. Carry the ball. I think that, to me, right. says a lot about what can open up for the, the running game for the other running backs and for the, what the offensive line can do. So, I don't know how many – I can't say how many he's going to carry. I don't know. I know. I need gonna, answers. I, I know they're <laughs> I not need gonna, answers. I know they're not going to put him in Bill. harm's way. I know they're not going to put him in harm's way, but I think if it comes <laughs> down to it, he's going to have to run some game. Let's say let's give him let's give him five five carries. Let's give him five carries. Designers or just total. Des ah, designers. Designer. All right. I, five designers, and then that's it. He's hedging. <laughs> yeah, I'm I like hedging. <laughs> five designers because I don't want I don't want to see yeah, the man yeah. get hurt. Because I, I really I really think that you know what the running backs are good hey. enough, and you run by committee. Yeah. You do that. You save the running backs. You also save your quarterback as well. But you save the running backs over the long haul of the season. Of that course. you're not wearing in, any one running back out. And I think that will do well for the Colts' offense. So I'm always a little hesitant about the run, the quarterbacks well, running, but I think I think we should have him running some a little bit because well, he has a, he's a talented. No doubt about that. You have to have him running. Oh, some, you have to. Right? I mean, he's talented. He just, you can't. He's to to steal a line from Rick Venturi. He's he's your ambient player. Right. I mean, quite frankly, he's the he's the only player, in, in my opinion, on this Colts' offense that keeps you up at night. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think. Certainly, hopefully, Michael Pittman Jr. can grow into that. Alec Pierce, Josh Downs, mm -hmm. but I mean, if, if you're if you're a defensive coordinator on Tuesday night, oh. who are you circling on your board? Uh, you, like you, you can't, we can't have number five, five. You're beat five. us and destroy us. Exactly. But he did talk about that earlier in the week. Someone at, in, inside the locker room did ask him about like what is your mindset early on in the season, early on in your career. I know he's built like a brick house. I mean, he's right. six foot four, two sixty, <laughs> but I mean, you still don't want him taking on unnecessary hits exactly. he talked about i've got to be conscious about when i'm running where i'm running you know the the ferocity in which i'm running with you know he said like all right if it's if it's third and three in the fourth quarter and it's a gotta have moment yeah i'm trucking somebody, somebody exactly but for the most part i'm gonna be smart yeah i'm gonna slide i'm gonna get out of bounds or, you know do something that where he's gonna save the hits he's not taking unnecessary hits where he don't have to take hits yeah i think anthony i think what we have seen to this point is is he's a guy who is a pass first mm -hmm. in so i mean he his pocket presses mindset has been in the pocket very yes. very good it's nice. not 
something's not there, I got to run. He's willing to step up. and st- he. That's one thing that I have been aware of. But when you talk about the amount of carries, me, mm-hmm. I want to see is third and five, third and six. Can you can you diagnose a defense and say, all right, we got to get a first down? That's when, Like if he has seven carries but four of them are third down conversions, I think that's where it's going to be so important on his rushing ability. I think that's where I am mm-hmm. looking for like – yeah, he'll have design runs. I think with a guy like that, an athlete that you have in there, you, you probably sprinkle that into the offense. But I think that's where his insert, like making him like the fourth running back, if you will, right. I think that's where you're going to see the most impact. It's on yeah. those plays where essentially the drive is over. The defense is won, but you have that little wrinkle where all of a sudden he's able to he's able to scramble for five yards and continue the drives. I think that's where his running ability is going to be so key. All just, right. Just like Matt said, I mean, that that's the key. The defense is going to be worried about, okay, if these guys are third and four, third and three, I have to worry about the back coming out of the backfield. I got to worry about the tight ends. Oh, no, they have a quarterback that can right. run, get some yards. So that's what Matt's talking about, you know, having another weapon back there. Right. And, you know, that why, that's why first and second down is going to be very important as well, to stay yeah. in at third and short. You know, the total tangent, but as a football fan, what I am so looking forward to in terms of watching Anthony Richardson is, to, I think you brought it up, like third and, and medium, and a play is well diagnosed by the opposing defense, and Anthony Richardson shrugs like two people off <laughs> and, they, and the offensive backfield – like, you know, puts on his Superman cape, and then he just wiggles out of the pocket and sprints for a first down. Like, the play is well defensed, but Anthony Richardson just wins the play yep. because he's the most most athletic guy right. on the field. Yep. Like, as a football fan, when you're watching your team and you have a quarterback that, that can do that against you, it's so deflating. Like, that is a <laughs> – that's a throw the remote in the street type of moment if you're a fan – of, of the, the defense going up against a guy like Anthony Richardson. I'm just excited to finally watch a player on my team that can do that. If you think a fan feels like that for the opposing team, what that's what I'm play, saying. What do you think the players like, feel like on the opposing look, team? To look at the body language of the defense yep. being like, are you blanking me? We still have, like, the drive are continues. Are you kidding me? Like, this is the 14th play of the drive when we are, you know, we had it well defense. And on top of that, I'm ready to see your call on it. He's going, uh, uh, finally. Oh, he got it. <laughs> that's, that's what I can't wait That's just what you <laughs> have to do with Anthony Richardson. Like, I've already kind of fallen into the trap. I told myself, no one cares about this, but I told myself before the season started, like with Anthony Richardson, you know, when, when you have a player that can do everything that he can, you have to be like a pause, like a half oh, yeah. beat behind right. the play because yeah, yeah. you can't anticipate anything. Like right. as soon as you think the play's over from a play-by-play guy standpoint, <laughs> you know, he, he does what he did in Philadelphia where he exactly. just single-handedly turns a five-yard loss into a 15-yard gain on a first down. So you, you definitely have to be conscious of that as uh, as the play-by-play dork uh, up in the press <laughs> box. All right, one final final couple of, uh, of, of confidence meters. Casey, the Colts pass rush. That was a big lingering question going into the season. The Colts' pass rush against the Jaguars' offensive line in this game on Sunday. Where are you on the confidence meter? I'm going to put this pretty high. I know that it's. Wow. I feel confident. I'm going to say I feel very confident because I think Walker Little, very little experience at left tackle, and their right tackle, yeah, he's a, he's a first-round draft pick, but if you look at how much he played right tackle in college, it's not very much. So I mean, really, listen, if first game's first game. First game exactly. is first, right? I mean, Whatever. We, I mean, we have we have really given. I mean, let's just throw it back to the Colts' perspective. I mean, Bernard Ryman has taken a huge step. Oh, and, and I mean, we saw what happened as a rookie at left tackle, and they drafted him to be a left tackle, and he had his ups and downs, and he looks like he's geared up and really ready for a, a second a second year to be very promising. But that, that first year, as Matt just said, it, it, the first game, first year, there's going to be a lot of things that he is not prepared for. So I am really bullish on what this defensive line can do to impact the Jags' offensive line. Now, interior, they've got some guys that are pretty good players, but I, I really think when their interior is good, but they've got to focus on guys like DeForest Buckner and Grover Stewart, I think this is a game where Quiddy Pay, Diowa Dangbo, exactly. Samson, like, I really think that that group can really kind of pin their ears back and really get after Trevor Lawrence. And ultimately, th- when you talk about the Jags, it's all the firepower on the outside – but if you can get to them in the backfield, it really eliminates kind well, of why this team is thought of to be the team to beat in this division. So I think this this defensive line can, can have a really good impact on Sunday. I mean, Bill, I, I certainly think they can. I agree with Casey. I think mm-hmm. they have the potential. But quite frankly, the Colts, they need it. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they have to have it they, this they year. Have to have, they, they have to have a pass rush. You know, last year when they played the Jaguars here, 
Uh, I think got to Trevor Lawrence four times. Mm-hmm. Exactly four times when he played here, even though he was like 20 for 22. Uh, throwing the ball, a lot of completions. But I think the defensive line can get some pressure on on uh, Trevor Lawrence. As you said, you know, the left tackle, Cam Robinson, is out, not yep. playing. Uh, so Walker Little is a substitute for him. Then you have the rookie on the right side. So I, I think, you know, you have the ends, you have Ebicom, you have Pay, those guys coming in. I think, you know, Dio, if they get, he gets in there, helping the, the other guys out and giving them a break. Mm-hmm. They can put some pre- pressure on Trevor Lawrence now. Trevor's a good quarterback. Yo, yeah. Don't get me wrong. Very right. elusive back there. So they're going to have to stay in their lanes and be res- take care of their responsibilities and not get out of their responsibilities and give a, a, a gap for Trevor Lawrence to run the football. So I think I feel good about that. And I, I want to feel good about it because we also know – they're weapons outside. They got some weapons outside, yeah. and we got some, and you, we got some young you, DBs. You have to help the coverage. Yeah, we, yeah. You, we have, 100%. We, have some, we have some young DBs back there, so we're going to have to get pressure on Trevor Lawrence to keep them from making big plays. I mean, how much of that is bringing extra people? You know what? I mean, that's something that obviously Gus Bradley doesn't want to do. No, no. no defensive coordinator wants to do that. I mean, in an ideal you know, utopia of, of defensive coordinators, <laughs> you would love – all of your front four players, depending on if you're a four three or three four, but you would love your defensive line to be able to generate that, you know, organically. But you know, listen, you got to do what you got to do. And right. situational football calls for pressure, no matter how you can generate that. Well, if, if if they can get pressure just with the four guys, I'm sure he would take that. But you know, I think sometimes you might have to send someone extra yeah. just to put, get just to get to the guy, just to to give the guys in the back a little bit of help. And, you know, hey, give us a little time, guys. Come on, let's 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 get that to the pressure. That extra beat is everything. Beat. Yeah, and that's yeah. what you want. You want you want them. You want the quarterback to either rush his throw or feel a little pressure. They don't actually have to sack him every time, but they have to put pressure right. on him. Mm-hmm. Get pressure on him. Make him throw before Alter he's ready. Alter the re- throw. Yeah, make him throw before he's ready to throw. Mm-hmm. And if he could do that and then DBs can play tight coverage, I think that would be well for the defense of the Colts. All right, we talked about Anthony Richardson. He's making his regular season debut, obviously. That's the storyline. But I think an underrated storyline for the first game, with it being the first game, is Shane Steichen. Mm-hmm. Right? He's 38 years old. He and I are the same age. I'm doing a podcast. He's watching film. All right, big difference. I've never felt worse about myself, all right? But at any rate, what I'm saying is, I mean, Shane Steichen, he, he called it out from uh, his introductory press conference. I'm going to be the head coach. I'm going to call plays. I'm not the offensive coordinator, but I'm going to call the plays on the sidelines during the game. But he's also, I mean, with, with, with him being a head coach, comes with that you know, when to challenge, yeah. the game management stuff, when to call timeouts. I mean, all of that stuff you have to just – it's like playing a game of chess in your brain for three and a half hours. And I don't think there's anybody you know, uh, more intelligent football-wise than Shane Steichen that I've yeah. come across with. The guy just beams. When you ask him a football question, oh, yeah. <laughs> he, loves he just goes. Like the, <laughs> the intensity and the tone of his voice just changes – when he can talk X's and O's and, and schematics and things like that. But confidence meter-wise, Bill, where are you with Shane Steichen's ability to handle all of the game day responsibilities, calm plays, and just managing the game for the first time? I am strongly confident in that. Strong to quite strong. Strongly confident. That. And the reason I'm strongly confident in that is not so much that Shane, he is a smart man. He can handle all of it. But you have to look at it. We have Gus Bradley on defense, who was a former head coach. Great point. You got Jim Bob Cooter, who was off – was offensive coordinator and his offensive coordinator. So I'm very confident that, you know, he can delegate some of the stuff out to those individuals, other coaches, to handle certain things during game day and during the game for him to be able to focus on not just calling plays, but also what else is going on. I mean, he can ask these guys quick questions, uh, especially Gus on the defensive side, refer to with Jim Bob Cooter on the offensive coordinator as far as that, and just, just make sure that everything's okay and delegate responsibility to those guys, and those guys can get back with him in communication. So I feel very confident of him being able to handle all the things he needs to handle as a head coach and an offensive coordinator. No, I, I agree with Bill, and I, I go one step play further. Call, I, I mean, is, I'm you, know, you, you look at who his mentor is, Norv Turner, a guy who arguably one of the, one of the best head coaches, at least of the last you know, 50 years. Play Norv callers, Turner too. Play callers, I mean, yeah. that, that's a guy who he handled all of that. So – I mean, Philip Rivers gave high praise. All these guys that are coaches now and, you know, top of when you think of mentality-wise in the NFL, they all beam when they talk of Shane Steichen. Nick Sirianni, And and Nick Mm -hmm. Sirianni. All these guys, they all are very, very 
you know, they give high praise to Shane Steichen. So I don't think this moment is going to be too big for him. No. I think this is he, he's kind of destined for this. Like you do all this preparation, <laughs> you get all this stuff in, and it's like finally I'm where I'm supposed to be. And I think that's where Shane Steichen is. So I am very confident in Shane Steichen as the head coach. And and does does the head coach need to be the smartest guy in the room in every room? No. No. But Shane Steichen is. He is. It also helps that he is. <laughs> doesn't hurt. That doesn't right? hurt. That's you know, for sure. He's probably going get, to be getting feedback in the headset saying, like, call a timeout. He's like, why? <laughs> no. <laughs> and here's why. And, like, in real time, da 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 And, like, oh, okay, you're right. Yeah. Carry on. Right? So, yeah, line, line up a field goal or whatever the, the moment calls for for the Colts right there. So, again, Shane Steichen makes his regular season, uh, season debut as the head coach of the Colts. Anthony Richardson on Sunday is set to become the youngest quarterback in wow. the history of the Colts franchise to start a regular season game. Also, he will become the third youngest quarterback in the history of the National Football League to start wow. a regular season game. He is 21 years, and I think – 111 days old coming up on Sunday. So certainly a lot is on his shoulders, but confidence-wise, I think we all agree. We're, we're right there with him. But uh, Anthony Richardson, his roommate during training camp and the preseason, that would be Josh Downs, another rookie on this football team. There are 12 – no, excuse me, there are 10 rookies and 12 second-year players Whew. on this roster. Wow. Kind of a tangent Very right there, young. but 41% of the Colts yum, roster yum. is made up of first and second year players. All right, how about that for a nugget? Put that in your <laughs> put that in your audience there, YouTube. But anyways, Josh Downs earlier today he joined myself and Bill Brooks to talk about his excitement going into the regular season and playing on Sunday against the Jaguars. Joining us fresh off the practice field, rookie wide receiver out of North Carolina. Going into game number one, I'm flanked by two outstanding wide receivers here, Bill Brooks and the rookie Josh Downs with us here on the official Colts podcast. Josh, appreciate your time, man. I mean, what is your level of excitement going into this first regular season game in the National Football League? I mean, how much of a dream come true is this going to be for you on Sunday? Yeah, just like you said, dream come true. Uh, first and foremost, it's a blessing just to be able to go out there, um, be healthy, and be able to play with my teammates. So, um, I'm glad to be a part of the organization, uh, and I'm ready to kick this thing off for sure. Now, it's not only your first game, but it's also Anthony Richards' first game. How exciting are you for both of you guys to play in your first NFL game together at Lucas Oil Stadium? Yeah, I feel like it's special uh, when a QB and a receiver come in at the same time, and we're both young guys on the offense, so we're going we're going to go in there together. We're going to have some growing pains, but we're going to make <laughs> some plays together as well. So uh, I'm excited to get out there with him, um, ball with him, see how he leads the team. Um, and get this thing rolling. So I'm, I'm excited for him. He's done a really good job, and I'm excited to see him show the world what he can do. Indeed. Right. I mean, you talked about it. How, how how would you describe your relationship with Anthony? I mean, you guys were roommates together during training camp. There's that great story. You know, you show up together for the uh, rookie mini camp. You guys are just hanging out in the parking lot, throwing the ball back together. How would you describe just how special of a bond you guys have already? Yeah, I say it's uh, he's, he's a special guy. Um, he's a guy that's dedicated to the game. Um, and I feel like I'm dedicated as well. So uh, when you have two young guys that come in that are really just trying to be great at the game, be as good as possible, um, I feel like you connect better. Uh, just a, as well as Juju Brents, he's the guy that came with us too. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like me and AR being roommates um, and coming in together, it's it's helped us grow a lot. And I feel like on the field, I mean, if, if I mess up or he messes up, it's all love. It's like, I mean... It's going to happen, but uh, we make some plays as well. So um, we we growing a lot in a relationship. He's becoming um, even more of a good friend to me, mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm excited for these next few years. How What kind of a roommate is he? Oh, he's clean. He's he's a clean roommate. <laughs> yeah. That's the best part. But now nah, he's a good, good dude. He don't snore either. So. Oh, I was going to ask you. That's yeah. real good. Is that he, surprised me. because I'm like, logs in the middle of the night here? <laughs> nah, he's not. So I'm like, dang. I'm like, he's about 6'5". He's big. I'm like, I, I'm like, dang, he probably snore. But I didn't hear one. <laughs> I hear one time he snored. So I was like, man, I like you even more now. Yeah. You guys are like the odd couple. So you're the you're the messy guy then, huh? No, nah, I ain't going to say I'm messy. But <laughs> he was he's very clean. clean? Is, yeah. he, is he is he is he kind of over clean? <laughs> Meaning, you know, this. I say he's not a, he's not a neat free, but he okay. def, he definitely kept his side clean. For okay, sure. that's good. Yeah, so that's, that was good. That's good. Good. Now we talked about you know Anthony's a big guy. We talk about big guys, and sometimes you playing in the slot, you have to run routes against linebackers. Mm -hmm. When you run those routes against linebackers, what is your mentality going in to the middle, running routes against those big guys? 
Yeah, so just like you said, they're big. So first and foremost, I don't want them to get their hands on me. So I try <laughs> exactly. to try to avoid them. But also, I feel like um, no linebacker really or really any safety can beat me out of a break on um, one step or um, stay with me with my quickness and speed. So for me, yes. uh, just deceiving them a little bit with eyes and then being more athletic than them at the same time. So just different plays called. When I know I get a matchup with a linebacker, I know I need to win um, because that's what they brought me here for. So um, when I get those chances, I just try to take advantage of it. Josh Downs is with us, rookie wide receiver out of North Carolina, going into your first game on Sunday against the Jaguars. What for you is the biggest difference jumping up a level going from, I mean, I know it's major college football, right? It's power five at North Carolina, but have you experienced a jump up in level in terms of speed or physicality yet? Yeah, I'd say uh, the, do, uh, the players are stronger. Mm -hmm. they're, they're better. Um, and the game moves faster. A lot more coverage is being disguised. Uh, they don't just give it away at the snap like a lot of teams did in college. But um, I'd say at the end of the day, it's football. So you, you can adjust to it. Um, but, of course, I'm going to have some growing pains just because um, it's, it's so much more detailed, mm -hmm. on, even on the offensive side than college. You have to be a lot more detailed with splits, um, depth on routes, and stuff like that. So um, I feel like just it's a whole lot more detailed and a whole lot more tedious, um, like watching tape and running routes and all that, than it was in college. But I like that. I'm glad I'm glad that I can be a perfectionist at my craft. Well, it's your job now, right? Perfect. I mean, this is 24-7. Mm -hmm. Not that it wasn't in college, but you don't have class, right? <laughs> yeah. You don't have – you don't got a, a, a three-page paper due on Monday morning. Exactly. You know nah. what I mean? That's the best part. I, I, I'm not <laughs> trying to worry about a paper being due, like, before the game. Like, ah, oh, dang, I got a five-page due in two days. <laughs> so I'm glad. I That's can't the best celebrate part. this win. But too much. Facts. Now your mind's free. You don't exactly. have to worry about it. Uh, I want to talk about, you know, you're talking about making that jump. For me, making that jump, my problem was the bump and run. Mm -hmm. I had issues with the bump and run. How have you adjusted to that going from college to the pros, dealing with the bump and run here at the NFL level? Yeah, uh, the physicality, um, I would say I've dealt with it pretty good. I, I mean, I go against Kenny Moore every day, so he's one of, he's one of the best in the yes. league at it. Uh, so it's helping me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd say that just being more physical back as well, not letting them – uh, dictate when the hand's going to be put on you. Sometimes yeah, you dictate you as well. And then just working on hands as well, like do, getting dudes off of you because a lot of the DBs, they're going to be bigger than me. So um, there's be, be a few that are probably 5'9", five, 5'10", five, but mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them are going to be bigger than me. So And try to ride you down the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so got to be quicker than them off right. the release, mm -hmm. um, stack them, yep. and then just uh, – be physical as well and use my quickness. All right, Bill knows this about me. I love nuggets, all right? So <laughs> you caught 81% of your targets last season in college football. Dang. That was the best among all players with at least 70 targets on offense last season. You had over 90 catches at North Carolina last year. You just seem to have, like, this great feel for the game. I mean, you're, what, 21, 22 years old? Where, where, where does that come from being such a young guy? Yeah, I'd say, well, God-given ability, of course, can't, can't deny that. But also, I mean, grew up around the game. Um, my dad played in the league a few years. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. I used to play running back some and then used to play defense as well. So mm -hmm. I played both sides of the ball. And I, I grew up just football, football, football. My uncle played in the league yeah. um, about 11 years, yeah, too. Dre so, Bly, yeah. Yeah, Dre, so yeah. Mm -hmm. just being around the game a lot, it kind of just uh, was around me all the time. So I learned it more. And my dad – he used to get on me like if I wouldn't see things when I was younger. He'd be like, "You you don't see this," and I'm like, "I'm like, nah." But now, like, it it, it click started clicking for me. At no, high Dad, school. I'm nine. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah. So it it kind of helped me out with that. And then, like I said, just um just God giving ability some, and then yeah. uh, tape, and then a lot of work for sure. Now you mentioned your dad. Now I know we know your dad's a coach. Now, if I were to ask your dad if he came in here right now, I'm asking your dad. What is the thing that Josh needs to improve on the most? What will you tell you or tell us? Oh, I know he's he's gonna say contact balance. After okay. I get hit, he he wants me to break a few more tackles. That's okay. that's what he's gonna say. Um, and then he he he's a track guy too, so he's oh, always big okay. on keeping the speed, speed up, yep. keeping the explosiveness up. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'd say I'd say contact balance is the main thing he's gonna say for me. And then uh, he, I, I'm not slow or nothing, but he just want me to always keep my <laughs> uh -huh, speed up, uh -huh. uh, just because I mean it's, it's crucial at the position. Now piggybacking off of that, what will you say is the thing that you need to improve on the most? Um, for me, I feel like just the little things, just just uh, locking in, like like I said, like on the different splits, different okay. yard depths. Um, just just continuously just being a perfectionist at the craft and just learning, diving into film each and every day. So. 
those little mistakes you make going from college to the league yes. don't happen. Uh, they're going to happen because, of course, I'm young. Uh, but, yeah, I feel like for me it's just the little things. Just just keep dotting, crossing my T's, dotting my I's. Okay. All right, last couple of things with Josh Downs, our guest, rookie wide receiver going into game number one. The Jaguars on defense, they return a boatload of players from last year, the uh, defending AFC South champions. When you watch film on them, what stands out to you? How, how much more – sophisticated on defense would you say they are compared to what you're used to to seeing there in the ACC oh, I mean they got they got world-class players of course so yeah. mm -hmm. that's one thing uh, they, they swarm the football a lot um, see that on film and they got a lot of athletes in the secondary play man-to-man -man coverage play a lot of different coverages so uh, of course they're better than the, the teams I was playing in college sure, yeah. sure. Um, but yeah they, they they're a good group back there uh, they got a good group up front as well uh, I'm excited to go out there and compete um, to see how I stack up with them and go make some plays. So it's going to be a fun game. Yeah. Now you're coached by one of the better receivers in the National Football League history, mm -hmm. Reggie Wayne. Never heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what nuggets have you given you about going into this first game in your NFL career? Yeah, I'd say so. Coach Reggie, he, he's, he's a little hard on me too. Um, he expects <laughs> a lot out of me. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, as of going into the game, um, not don't give really. away. Don't have to give away any secrets. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, not just, going into secrets. Little nuggets. I'd say, like for me, he's uh he's so he's tedious on my on my routes a lot and okay. um on, on the film on the tape of practice and stuff. So for me, with him, I'm I'm asking him what he would do in this scenario, what he would do in that scenario, because like you said, he's one of the greats. He's done it. So for me, um, taking those taking those knowledge that knowledge he has and mm -hmm. having a guy that already been there and done that. Um, I like being able to ask those questions and, and have a legit respect for it because he really did it. So yes. I'm like, uh, what would you have done in this scenario when he lines up outside and you know you got this type of route? And see what his input is and then be like, okay, um, try to implement it, see if it works, and then maybe try to throw my own thing on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, Co Coach Reggie's been there for me since, since day one. Helps me a lot. Um, whenever I need somebody, he's there. He has a wealth of knowledge. Pick yeah, it all. Pick does. it all. Tell me. Sure. Impressive all guy. Yes, Impressive guy right here. Josh Downs. Last one. Game number one. I understand that. But do you have a pregame ritual yet? Um, so <laughs> I try to take some of the stuff I did in college uh, up here. Um, so before the game, every time I get to the stadium, drop my bags off, I walk the field and I go pray in the corner of the end zone mm -hmm. for about five minutes, pray, um, come back in the locker room. Um, and then the one thing I always do before the game, I listen to Power by Kanye West. And that yeah. <laughs> gives me chills. And I'm just like, hey. Now, nope. now, are we talking like right before the game or? Uh, I'm, like I'm talking about before we before we run out, bring it up as a team and run out the tunnel. Oh, I'm, there you go. I'm well timed. Oh. No one man should have all that power. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I feel it. Now, that's going to be all. What do you think that's going to be like as you take the field? You run out of the tunnel mm -hmm. wearing the blue. You got the horseshoe in the side of your helmet. Sixty-five thousand people going nuts. Yeah. What do you think that's going to be like? Like, is that an adrenaline feeling you think you've ever experienced before? No, nah, I mean I haven't experienced it. A uh, little, well, bit, yeah. little bit in the pre uh, preseason, but sure. not not the not the real thing. So um, I say it's going to be a, it's going to be a surreal moment right when I do it. But then it, it's time to go play. Yeah, then no I, I can't be caught up in it's the, a lot of emotion. Yeah, I can't be caught up in the oh look look at the stadium. <laughs> I got to be man. I got to be caught up in the let, <laughs> I got a man to beat every play and I got a job to do. So that's yeah. what I'm looking forward to. Well, man, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it. Josh Downs right there, rookie wide receiver, looking to make a big impact for the Colts right out of the gate on Sunday against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Josh, thanks so much. Thank you. Continued success and best of luck. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Good luck, my man. Yes, sir. Again, that's Josh Downs, the rookie wide receiver out of North Carolina, joining us here on the official Colts podcast. We're back wrapping it up with Casey Vallier, Bill Brooks, I'm Matt Taylor. Uh, you know, it's funny. Josh Downs, obviously, he's been here, what, four months since the draft? Mm -hmm. um, there's no one on this Colts roster that has been here all nine years since the Colts last won a week one regular season game since 2013. Um, you know, the, the funny also nugget on that is Anthony Richardson was, what, seven years away from being a graduate of high school <laughs> the last time the Colts oh, boy. won a week one regular season wow. game. So that puts everything into perspective. But, no, seriously, I mean, I know it's just one game out of 18, and they all count the same. But, Bill – Put on, you know, put your former uh, wide receiver cleats back on. What what would it mean to finally? Yeah, there you go, looking good. <laughs> Some Nikes there. But what what would it mean to finally break this streak and to just get off to a good start? Because 
you know, again, you, you go back to last year, five of the first seven games in 2022 were against the AFC South. We all remember how those went. I mean, the season was basically an uphill battle after week seven when you got swept uh, by the Tennessee Titans, that second game against against Tennessee. This year, kind of the same thing, right? Week one out of the gate against Jacksonville, week two at Houston. I mean, what 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 would it mean to finally get off to a good start and to help yourself tremendously in the division after what happened last year? I mean, you want to – you always want to get off to a good start. Of course, you want to win, but it just will bring, means so much to the guys as far as, okay, all the work we put in from minicamp, OTAs, training camp, all the stuff we've done – We've got something to show for yeah. right now. And you, and you can also point to, listen, this moment's not too big for our rookie head exactly. coach, for our rookie, rookie quarterback. quarterback. Exactly. That matters. And for the guys that, that came here, the new guys here, we got off to a great start. And it just makes you feel better, makes you feel good, and gives you some confidence going into the next week, going against another AFC South opponent. So I think winning, the game, winning this game, getting off to a good start, will go a long way with this team now. Is it the end of the season? No, it's not the end of the season if it doesn't happen. But believe me, it makes things a lot better. You feel a lot better going into that next week against Houston, having a win under your belt. Casey would also set the tone. Like AFC South champions from from Jacksonville, who cares? That was last year. Right. Last year's last year. This year's this year. Parody in the NFL, you always see a team jump up four, five, six wins every year that missed the playoffs the year before. That is literally what I was about to say. Is parody in the NFL? I mean, year in, year out, it's it all doesn't there. matter. I mean, there is. It's a, doesn't. You look at the playoff teams from last year. You're going to look at the playoff teams this year and go, wow, that drastic. Difference. Last year there were seven new teams. Yes. I mean that is. Yeah. What happens when yeah. it comes time? So, biggest thing you think about it, it's divisional game at home. That's what you want to win. Those are those are the games you, you circle. Those I remember when when T Y was here. His big saying is it means double, and and that is that was his every every week when it was an AFC South opponent. You go in and you hear T Y just talking about it means double, it means double, and that's something that has always resonated for me. And it's just so important because these guys understand the easiest way to get into the playoffs. Win your mm-hmm. division, and it starts. It, it, there's nothing better than to go in as a team who nationally, this team, everybody's looking at this Colts team, saying, oh, yeah. "All right, it's a rebuild." You no know, expectations. They're not going right. to win any games. Right. So you have that. You kind of get that chip on your shoulder. I know that that's what these professional athletes they thrive for having a chip put on their shoulder. And this one, it's a huge chip because you have that. You got the guys who you're the hunter. You're, you're trying to hunt these guys. The, the, the Jags are the team to beat. So you've got a great opportunity with. One, as I mentioned earlier, you know the, the the sample size of what you have put together on tape is not very much for the Jags as far as prep goes. There's going to be a lot they haven't seen. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You're going to go out and prove all of that against the team who you're trying to beat at home. I think it's a great – it all really comes to a put on Sunday that I'm really excited for this game on Sunday. I have really. no idea what to expect from the Colts offense. No, and that's the way they've no, wanted it I want this it entire way, time. Yeah. And so from that standpoint, I know I've used this bad analogy. This is like Christmas morning, man. Let's <laughs> let's unwrap it, it all. Let's see so what dumb. we got. Let's see. Uh, well, that wasn't on my list, but that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know that existed. I want to see Josh Downs going in motion. I want to see screens. I want to see deep balls. I think we're going to see everything coming yep. up on Sunday. And so we are sitting here. We're sick and tired of talking about it, all right? <laughs> yeah. We have diagnosed this thing Real every football. way possible for the last nine months since the end of the last uh, season here for the Colts. So hope you enjoyed our Thursday edition of the official Colts podcast brought to you by WinBet. The Thursday crew with you every single week here. Casey Vallier, Bill Brooks in the Ring of Honor. I'm Matt Taylor, and we'll talk to you on Sunday. Colts and Jaguars on the Bell Tire Radio Network, and you can watch it on Fox. Until next week, a double dose of the official Colts podcast on Tuesday and Thursday here on the Colts Audio Network and YouTube. So long, everybody.